just one more thing. Uh, we do have Holy Communion today, so we're kind of, uh, let's think of that. Okay, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, God, again, for your love and for your mercy. For the endured forever, oh God. Father, I pray that you hide me behind the cross, that they may see you, not me, God. Father, I pray um, your anointing upon this time, your blessing, God. Give us ears that we may hear what the Spirit says, God. More than that, God, let's not just be a people that hears your word, but a people that applies. A people that hears your word and hide it in their heart, not sinning against you and apply it in their life. Extending the kingdom of God in their homes, in the marketplace, the highways, the byways, Lord God, to the ends of the earth. Bless on the Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, today's talk, or message title today, is called The Report. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and says, The Report. The Report. The Report. Some of you might be thinking, this is what I think when I hear the word, the report. I think, whose report are you going to believe? Okay, let's try it again. There's a passage of scripture that says this, that you say, whose report you would believe? And the, the, you know, you say, we will believe the report of the Lord. Amen? So here we go. Whose report do you believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. Not bad. I think you guys did the... Uh, Joy of the Lord is a strength was a little bit better than that. Let's try it again. Whoa, competition. <laughs> tough act to fall. Tough act. <laughs> Whose report will you believe? We, we shall believe, believe the report of the Lord. Amen, I'm bad. <laughs> you gotta do the clap. Yeah, yeah, clap. Six steps. Okay. I, I'm thankful and I'm thankful and we're blessed that we're um we're taping this morning's um sermon, uh, but we'll be also taping every sermon and exhorters. We'll have it on um, on, on YouTube. Um, we're going to um, try to get you sites that you can go to. If you miss service or whatnot, you can find it online and you can go back to it. We also are in the midst of working on um, getting the worship team on. Um, there's a few more steps that we have to do with licensing of songs that we sing as we go public in social media. And so just um, kind of broadening the horizon of what God is doing here in Little Dorothy, Tana Katai, Momotai, Kavela. Okay? So you can get us online at YouTube. The report that I'm talking about today is basically, um, some of you, most of you know that I travel two, four times for ministry and I go to render a report to um, conference headquarters. So all the pastors come together every three, four months of the year. And basically we take care of kind of church business, but we give a report to home church and all that. And this has been going on for, I can't remember since ministry of the DOF. And uh, what I like to do normally, I come back and I give a leadership report, but I've been, um, I've been kind of building a message or, or um, building the message when I come back to give you kind of the idea of what I experienced during my trip and then tell you some of the highlights what happened the cool stuff what was the word of the lord in the trip and all that so it's almost like taking you on my trip but not really taking you on my trip amen so the report also actually talks about what god is doing on different places and in door faith okay so that's the report that i share with you this morning in a message form and let me just share as i said i'm sharing you some of the highlights of what god is doing and so there's a lot of stuff that went on, but I'm sharing a few things, so plenty of stuff. Okay, so um, among it is what uh, Brother Scotty mentioned earlier. One of the first things, um, they normally gets us in the room 8 o'clock uh, early Saturday morning, and they have the pastors give their report. Um, it's kind of like a spiritual report. What's going on in Waihawa? What's going on in... Big Island, what's going on? And uh, lo and behold, I was the blessed guy to be the first guy in the hot seat. They said, uh, we want to know what's Molokai, what's Molokai doing and all that. So anyways, we was able to report some of the stuff we're doing here. 
But um, one of the big things that was came out of it, um, that uh, behind the scenes that we're working on, is a men's conference that is happening in April, the second to the fifth. So we're um, in the in the door for movement. They're promoting it in Honolulu and other places in the islands. So um, they, they we're pl in planning that uh, there will probably be 20 to 50 men to come and participate. This is where they're gonna hang out for the weekend. We'll have service every night and other stuff. I do have a flyer, a sheet, and, and all that. We're promoting that. So again, this is kind of what we're um, in, in the making process. And we want you to be part of it, whether you're here physically, financially, or whatever whatever means that you can do. Just men's getting together. And uh, it was kind of funny because they kind of stressed, please, no women. <laughs> I, I thought that was funny. You know. <laughs> but anyways, uh, men did Man, I don't know what they say, men letting down their hair, how do they, I don't know. If they, they said women let down their hair, what, what did they say about men? Take it easy. Huh? Take it easy. from a woman, right? Men, <laughs> let your hair. Let your beard down, maybe. Anyway, so men's retreat, I, I reported on a few things that we're, what we're doing with tech and worship and exhortation and so forth and so on. But other things that came out of this that uh, I also got a chance to share um, an understanding of vision and mission and uh, what, what God's word said about it. Some of you know uh, my spiel about it and others don't, but if you want to talk to me about it, you can. Uh, but I was able to share with the, um, with the leaders over there and I, they loved it. Um, in Maui, um, Pastor Kapoku, again, again, I'm sharing you highlights and glimpses and we'll, we'll share some scriptures that, um, that will happen, but the pastor in couple, uh, pastor in Kahana Dora Faith has a theme this year, or his kind of like logo or mission statement. And here's his mission statement, or his um, to capture, and he's, he's he's really pressing in for each of his members to have this thought. And then the three words, simple thought, kind of like a mission statement. And here it goes: it's win. Build and send. Okay? Win, build, and send. Win them for Christ, build them up in Christ, and send them out to make up other believers. Amen? Win, build, and send. And he wanted to make it simple so people can understand the concept kind of of the gospel in a nutshell. And so it was really cool for most of us we said, man, that sounded like Pastor Mildred's, one of her big statements that she would make. That's uh, for some of you wondering who she was, the founder of the Dorothy Ministry. Long story, but our founder was a woman. And so, anyways, one of the, the great things that she said early on in ministry that uh, is synonymous of what he said, and I think he modernized the concept of what she said. And here's the, here's the old version or the late version or the other version that was shared. The other one goes like this. Glow, grow, and let them go. Amen? Glow, grow, and let them go. See if it sounds like the same thing, but in a different language that we might, probably a modern language, right? Win, build, and send. So when you're thinking about the gospel, it really cracks it in a nutshell, right? You know, becoming a believer, growing in Christ. You are growing your faith, and as you grow, part of your um, part of it, the drive in, in Matthew 28 tells us to tell people about the good news that Jesus saves, Amen. That Jesus is the only one in heaven, um, and, and to make disciples of all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And lo, I will be with you to the ends of the earth, Amen. So when build and send, that was a great thing that he shared. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, home church of all the different things that they're doing and I won't tell you all the things that they're doing but I'll tell you one thing that they did recently that you know is kind of a top of the list they kind of recruited somewhat hired a youth pastor in the door faith um, they re someone recruited hired a youth pastor pastor she's from Tennessee um, I think she's from Tennessee well she's from Nashville Tennessee 
27 years old. Um, her, her name is Bethany Landers. Kind of blonde hair, really young, kind of on fire for the Lord kind of gal. And, and, and interesting enough for some of you, the, her relationship or how she got here, her great, oh, excuse me, her grandfather used to be the pastor of Assemblies of God in Waiawa, in Honolulu. Her grandfather was the pastor of Assemblies of God in Waiawa, where the president of Dora Faith, John Rogers, was saved, Pastor John Rogers, saved under his ministry, Bethany's grandfather. And so years later, they've, made, they've been in touch and in connection Bethany uh, went to Christian college, a college um, prep and everything like that. The last year and a half she was in, I think she was in uh, some kind of Muslim country, I forget the name of it, and ministering as a teacher there for about a year and a half. So she's returned to the States and Pastor John recruited her. Her major is into, her major is, um, help me. For a second, she has a, a music or a, a music or song degree. Is her major? She speaks about five or six different languages. Um, she plays the guitar, piano, and the saxophone. And we were um, blessed to Sunday morning that she rendered a song for us. And so she's. Um, Pretty multi-talented, gifted of the Lord. I did invite her here. I thought she would get along with Shai and Tamari pretty good. So I said, hey, you know, let me, if uh, your journey's still mm -hmm. Pastor John, you'll come visit us and hang out with us for a weekend or so. Mm -hmm. And anyways, that was pretty cool. Um, I like one of the same, uh, one of the uh, churches in Waiawa, Dorothy, Waiawa, and I shared this the other night um, mm -hmm. with some of the Bible study group. Waiawa is going through some phase of building physically building, and all of us, you know, we're trying to look at how to advance God's kingdom and be greater stewards of God's house. But in Waiwa, they had a big crack in their ceiling or a couple of things that was happening. They have a twice as big a church than this and kind of more extravagant. When you're in Honolulu, things are just different city-like, right? But a big crack in the roof, they had to fix this and fix that. They fixed the crack, they fixed some windows because of the crack. That was $18,000 later after they fixed that. And the roof guys basically said, well, you have a foundation problem. Mm -hmm. um, the, the crack on the roof was big basically because there's a foundation of shift that really cracked the roof. It wasn't the roof that cracked. It was the foundation that shifted that cracked the roof. You got to go fix the foundation. So they're already $18,000 that spent, so they're kind of cheering us on to say, hey, if you guys can help or just keep us in prayer, we're, we're praying for some funds to come in. And uh, Pastor John asked, oh, how much are you guys praying for? He said, well, after you do the foundation and the paint, we're, we're praying for 10,000. And uh, and they said, well, you know, our pastor said this to us in, in our meeting to tell us that we need 10,000 more than the 80,000 that we just spent. He said this in the meeting. I want to tell you this. That we have good news and bad news. And they said, all right, okay, what's going on? He said, the good news is this first. We have the money. And everybody said, oh, yeah, we have the money. Wait a minute, what's the bad news? He said, the bad news is it's in your pocket. <laughs> Amen? And so it, it, it's by faith giving and believing. And, you know, you can't give everywhere, but where God has called you, and um, where your heart is, um, that's some place that you want to invest and team up with, um, to um, provide seeds and invest in, in kingdom work. Amen? And so I thought that was very really cool. Um, Sister Lynette, she kind of knew that, you know, she said she knew it before the punchline came, and I was like, man, this, where have I been, you know? But I think it's cool. But I, I think the principle still relies or uh, is really good for us too. Amen? of uh, investing or partnering up with God just where we are uh, and what God is speaking to us. And not only here, but what, what God has put on your heart in ministry, where you want to be a part of and where you want to plant seed and being a cheerful giver. 
Okay, so um, more highlights and we'll keep going down. Um, they announced that there will be a follow-up, a next level class for PIT. This, this year we'll have a few more classes. So PIT is pastors in training. Last year they provided a course, I think it was eight or 10 weeks. Um, there's a, a group of leadership that made, met here and we really put some time in it. Uh, and it gives you a glimpse and some lessons of, of what um, well, the glimpse of leadership, eldership and pastorship looks like. And there was quizzes and tests that we had to take and so forth and so on. But the, for some of us, they're gonna offer us a secondary class, uh, next level classes for pastors and training class. We thought that was pretty cool. There's also, um, they promoted Kairos, an online class, if you wanna get um, some kind of associate or degrees through ministry, that's also available um, for, for people seeking advancements in the Lord. Um, okay, so that was kind of conference in a nutshell. Um, they did touch up one last thing and then we'll move on to the Sunday service that they shared. But um, one last thing that they said that what really is coming up that they have noticed um, as they look around in the world or look, look in community is that there's a cry of the new generation's crying for social justice. We want to see social justice and, uh, you know, we're kind of laid back here and there's a few things. So I was just trying to figure out what he meant by, the, by that. But just different things about how people are pressing towards equality, about um, um, women being uh, equal pay, equal rights, and stuff like that. But there's a there's sense of just more um, social, um, social justice that people are seeking. And, um, and he said, but even that, um, this is why he feels led that he's gonna um, offer um, some training in the areas of apologetics. And he asked, he asked everybody, anybody know what is apologetics? Anybody know? And then, you know, because I like a good laugh. I'm sorry. I told him, I'm sorry. That means I'm sorry. Well, apologetics, it, it sounds like you're sorry, but it's not the definition of that. I don't know where the root word came from or whatever. But apologetics basically means for some of you that you don't know, is to give a defense of what you believe, or who you believe in, why you believe in Jesus Christ. Why what testimony what why you can what what can you say to other people when they say you're a Christian. Amen. And so people have to think about this. Because every time if we're coming to church we we, we enjoy learning about the Lord. We, we know what Jesus did for us and so forth and so on and we grow in it but when you know when it gets hard to be out there and you're ministering or you, you're sharing the love of God to somebody else why should I believe why do you believe in Jesus you never see him you know get all these different questions how do you know he's real amen so uh, in apologetics it actually helps you um, to um, learn on how you respond of what you believe in who you believe in in most cases it's an experience or an encounter that you have your personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now you can give them scriptures and you can give them the foundation of, okay, the scripture tells me this, this tells me that. But it really is, when the light bulb comes on, when the rubber meets the road, it's what Jesus has done for you. Amen? Your encounter, your experience, your love for God, and how he interacts with you. It's a relationship, it's not a religion. Amen? If so, it's just outside of the boundaries of who you are and what you believe in. So apologetics really educates and structures these thoughts and, and, and has a, a, a big role to play when you're looking at certain things as social justice. Because there's some tough things in this world that are being challenged. If you didn't know it, and I think most of you do, is that truth is being challenged uh, for years now. Uh, your truth is not my truth. The truth, the, I can worship the tree. Every living thing, I worship the stars. My truth, you know, is my truth. Amen. So, um, just things are so um, bent in the in the world, and so it just gives an opportunity to our education and our understanding through prayer and through the Holy Spirit to to come up with answers of why we believe in Jesus and who we are in Christ and the relationship that we have. It is called apologetics. 
So he's going to hold some classes. I think it's in Honolulu, but if you have the fun or the will or the drive to check it out. Um, Pat Zuccaran is probably the guy that he's um, um, hooking up with um, to promote these classes. He's a minister that um, is uh, specialized in apologetics. And his ministry's ministry is called Evidence and Answers. You can find him on 99.5, The Word. And you can listen in to him every now and then. Um, he has done some training. He does. He goes all over and does some training. He was eight here when I served um, one year that he taught different classes on apologetics. Okay. So again, so some different, a lot of stuff that is happening, right? Um, so let me talk about uh, in, in my few minutes that I have. They talk about Sunday service in Honolulu last week. The, the praise and worship was a little different and as they opened up in um, prayer. We had this guy, Terry McAlman, lead a worship service that uh, um, Sunday morning. And so most of us, we don't know who Terry McAlman is. Um, maybe I'll pass this around later, but here's a picture of him that led worship Sunday morning. And you can Google him too to check him out. And what's the big deal of Terry McCormick? Uh, Terry McAlman. He sings a, a, a few half a dozen songs. He's a singer songwriter. And maybe you've heard some of the songs that he sung for, for some of you. He sang, You deserve the glory, you deserve the honor. He's the singer songwriter of that. He also is the singer songwriter. I sing praises to your name, oh Lord, praises to your name, oh Lord. Okay, he sang that one, he wrote that one, He's, he also wrote this one. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome. Some of you don't know the songs, but these are songs for many generations that I grew up on in Dora Faith. It's kind of like our kind of um, some of our mantra of, of worship coming through Dorothy. Um, but not only Dorothy, uh, many churches around the world would sing these songs, and he's known worldwide. Here's another song that he sings, a few, a few more, and then we're moving on. I just want to praise him, lift my hands and say, I love him, you are everything to me. Okay, he sang that one, and then the last one that I know is, I stand, I stand in all of you. Holy God, it's true. I stand in all of you. Okay, so you know that one? He was the guy that leading worship. He did a fantastic job. The only thing for me personally, I was sad he never sang any of those songs. <laughs> so I sing them to you, right? But he was the guy, sing the song writer. He's the guy that uh, wrote it, and I was like, wow, get his autograph, and he left. But anyways, we were able to have him uh, do worship for us. Um, he, uh, one of his songs are in the top 20 for historical Christian um, around the world. So there's a few songs. He sang, you know, he's singing another, you know, he wrote another 20, 30 songs. But these are the songs that really hit home for us that we really kind of grew up on for some of us, you know. So Pastor John, he shared a message about season or seasons. He talked about, um, in his message, he, he went to Daniel um, chapter 2, verse 21. I want to read there for a second. It's a really quick scripture, but I want you to um, don't leave here without the word of God, right? Second two twenty one. Basically, for my version, it reads, He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. So, I mean, he, he really wanted to capture it. And then he went to Ecclesiastes 3, 1. But basically, he was just addressing the seasons of what seasons that we're in or what season you believe that 
God have you in in this season? I really think he um, took some of the notes through Gary Chapman um, that talked about um, some of you don't know Gary Chapman. He does the five love languages. And, um, he's a writer, but he also wrote uh, a book about seasons too. But then, you know, Pastor John kind of, I think he quoted some thoughts about it. You know, winter, if you're in a winter season and you're walking spiritually, it's kind of cold. You know, it's a cold phrase to be in. Um, he kind of went down to, to describe each season. Um, in the summer, it might be hot. Things are heating up, there's pressure. Um, the spring, a time of planting or growing. So he basically looked at different seasons and he kind of um, shorted it up. And how, that when we look at seasons, it reflects uh, what nature is doing, our environment is doing. But then he said, well, that's, what season are you in spiritually? Where are you in your walk? Um, what, what is God taking you through? And then, then he kind of, um, continue to promote that or um, define that. And then he finished off with Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1. And basically if you read down from Ecclesiastes it says there's a time for everything under the sun. A time to kill a time to um, be born, a time to die, you know, a time for war a time for peace. As you look in the passage. But the whole just of it, through his message and he was telling what seasons you're in and in these seasons, are you planting? Are you growing? Are you being watered? Where, where are you in the Lord? Where do you want to be? Amen? He said that these are things that, you know, we need to ask ourselves and encourage ourselves. If we're in the winter, man, let's get moving so we'll be in the spring, you know, or, you know, or getting out of some of the tough seasons. And he believed that we're in a great season in Dorothy, and God is providing great opportunities out there, and he believed in a whole that um, the opportunities arise, but you know um, that we gotta understand what the planting is, or understand where we are, and just realize some stuff. He said, "Well, you know, just because, um, for example, just because you live in a garage, does that mean you're a car? No, of course not. But it, it, most of the time, the car lives in the garage." But, but he talked about stuff about planting, you know, and yeah. talking about uh, of, of growing. And he said, you know, even in the planting, you know, you want to plant good seeds, right? And as you plant or you nurture good seeds, um, you, you don't plant um, sweet apples and then get thorns and bushes and lantana and kiaoli, uh, right? <laughs> when you're planting some good stuff, you want to plant the good stuff to get the good stuff. Amen? You plant the good stuff to get the good stuff. You don't plant the rocky stuff. You don't invest or you don't put the junk stuff in and expect good stuff. Amen? And sometimes it's hard because some Christians, we want to put the junk stuff in and get good stuff in results. Should it be that way? It cannot be that way. Amen? So anyways, he just shared about this great opportunity. And it kind of reminded me as he was sharing the message about this, about season and proclaiming a great opportunity, um, it kind of reminded me of the State of the Union address, right? In January, you really kind of get it out there to kind of set the tone of how it should be and, and, and what you're looking at. And, and, and mind you, um, we had several messages of resolute, to, not to resolute, and other stuff like that. But just give us an opportunity of what season and really gives us an opportunity to do some self-check, right? Where we are in the Lord, where we are with the body of Christ, you know, where are we planted, how are we going to continue, how are we going to grow, what are we doing in, in the Lord? And if we're doing it, praise God, how we continue it? How can we extend it and encourage it, amen, and pass it on and, and, and be excited about it? of the next generation and keeping in step with the Spirit of God. Amen? And not that that be leaving behind. Praise God. Last week was fantastic. For the joy of our strength, Mother 2, 4, 5, 6, I will magnify the Lord. Amen? I, I praise God. And I, I'm just excited of what we're doing because we, you know, um, there's different messengers and different colors and flavors that you're going to learn. But praise God, each 
experience and each anointing from the last week is great, but there's new anointing every day. Amen. There's fresh anointing every day of what God is doing. God is alive and well. And we're just living organism of who he is, an extension of his love. What is he doing to us today? Amen. Amen. Praise God. That was great yesterday. That was great 10 years ago, 5 years ago. But what is he doing to us now? What state are we in? And if we're in a junk state, in a junk place, then get out in Jesus' name. Get out. Get out of the rut. Get out of the, 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 the things that keep you captive of being a blessing, of being an extension of God's love. What season are you in? Amen? May, may you be in a spring light, a growing, a, 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 a flowering season in the Lord that you can be the extension of God's love. He had Bethany come up and sing a song, and then he kind of closed with just, you know, looking at things of, of being a state of the union, uh, looking at uh, social injustice. And you know, my noggin was just going off thinking about all kinds of stuff, right? It's always a blessing to be in a different place with people who love God, amen? Uh, when I travel or when I be with other people, that they just love the Lord. I mean, it just, fires me up, and I want to go home and, you know, just uh, put my hands to the plow and run like crazy and good stuff, and then reality kicks in, right? But, you know, amen, that we press towards the mark of the high calling. It takes work. It, 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 it takes grinding things on that you may see the fruit of your labor. Amen? That, that you know, it, it's that thought that everybody wants to get to heaven Who's going to walk the narrow path? It takes some commitment and some consistency, getting on your knees and praying down heavens. Amen? I, I mean, it'd be great because you see the things in the front and the things, you, you see some of the, uh, the evidence of what God is doing, but it really starts in prayer. It really starts in relationship with the Lord. It really starts there, of, of praying in your homes interceding for your loved one, having a relationship with God, talking to God like how you talk to people, amen? When nobody else is around and everything goes away, God is still there with you, amen? God is still there by your side. And so um, I'm gonna close with that and then we're gonna take communion. Um, I'm gonna ask um, uh, Jerry and um, a couple guys, Pastor B. said who's gonna help us this morning. But um, we'll close in prayer. And again, I hope this report has encouraged you, um, but, but also challenged you of where you are and where you want to be, being part of God's partnership in the kingdom of God. Amen? And again, um, let's stand as we pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that you continue to speak to each and every one of us, God. And Father, I'm excited that there's some great opportunity and, and you know, you're just growing, you're challenging us, and you're encouraging us, I'm looking at things different, God, to extend, to uphold, to lift up, Lord God, to be in a better place, God, a better relationship, Lord God, as we continue to offer us ourselves unto you, knowing that you are the source, Lord God, knowing that you're the only way. And so, God, continue to give dreams and visions to my brothers and to my sisters, God. Continue to give revelation, Lord God, as they continue to seek you, your word tells them that they shall find you. That you'll bring understanding, Lord God. That you'll empower, that you'll deliver, Lord God. And so, Lord, we thank you, God. Father, as we enter the time of Holy Communion, Lord God, um, we pray your blessings over this juice that represents your blood. And we pray an anointing and blessing over this cracker, this bread, 
that represents your body, Lord. Father, as we um, take opportunity to just be ministered and minister to you, Lord, I just commit uh, this remaining part of communion to you. Bless and anoint again, we pray in Jesus' name.